think you know a game is good when it's appealing to someone that doesn't even really fall into its key demographic. The game I'm referring to here is Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Now, I've got nothing against the 40k universe, it's just my interest in it is fleeting at the absolute best of times. So, a game about being able to play as a captain of the Ultramarines, taking on orcs and the forces of chaos, I mean, it shouldn't be appealing to me. And yet, it ends up being that way simply because the game itself is awesome. I can still remember buying this thing on the PC back in the day and not really having any idea what I was getting myself into. On the surface, it was a third person shooter that looked pretty violent and fun to play, which was about the only prerequisite I needed back then. And the fact that it took place in the 40k universe to me was just window dressing. But oh, how wrong I was. Space Marine tells the story of Captain Titus, voiced by Mark Strong, and I'd argue no one could have done a better job at it than this guy. Our plan is unchanged. Get the Inquisitor and the power source off-world. Titus is a captain in the Ultramarines chapter, one of the most well-known and courageous Space Marine chapters. The plot is that the planet Gry has been invaded by orcs, with the Imperial Guard hopelessly outnumbered by the Onslaught and in desperate need of assistance. So, Titus lands on the planet with his buddies, Sergeant Sedonis, another seasoned Marine, and the inexperienced Leandros, who honestly spends more time questioning Titus's motives than he does killing orcs. Why do you still interpret the Codex so narrowly? I look to its rules for guidance. We all do. But there are also benefits to thinking for yourself. Initially, the goal is to destroy a defense cannon that's making it impossible for the Imperial Guard to receive reinforcements. But then the goal shifts as Titus and his buddies have to find and rescue an Imperial Inquisitor named Drogon, who honestly just screams that he's up to no good. I mean, just look at him. If the Orcs find it, they'll try and take it apart. Soon after that, shit gets real and the forces of Chaos show up, who all look utterly badass. And then the situation becomes a lot more escalated. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a walking encyclopedia on the workings of the 40k universe, even though it seems like that's something a lot of YouTubers pretend to be. But I can still appreciate how faithful and detailed the game world's been created. From the designs of all the power armor worn by the Ultramarines, the architecture and style of the various environments you explore, and all of the weapons and items you come across. Even down to the enemy factions, especially the Orcs themselves with their behavior and dialogue, which oddly on some level I find really charming and hilarious. Was that supposed to hurt? How all of them have these odd Cockney accents and how they pronounce Space Marine in this really bizarre way. Get off my ship, Space Marine! Space Marine! Space Marine! Space Marine! You'll hear them screaming in fright when they see you sometimes, and if they're in small numbers, they'll just outright run away from you instead of fighting. Which really gives them a lot of personality as an enemy type. And I actually felt bad when I had to kill the Orc Warboss, because, you know, despite his entire race being complete dicks, I still kind of liked him. He seemed like a pretty cool dude. I'll rip your guts right out your throat. Ah! But just the way certain characters are written and handled, like they feel established within the universe and fully fleshed out, instead of just being some random NPC you're interacting with and will never see again. It's just a really good voice cast combined with some fantastic writing and it makes the whole thing very compelling. And I was actually interested in what was happening. That is why we are here. Leave the gun to us. The whole thing just feels like fan service come to life and it oozes authenticity and a blatant love and appreciation for the source material. It's kind of harping on what I said earlier, how you don't really need to be a fan of the 40k universe to enjoy this. I mean, it definitely helps, but the quality of the writing, the characters, and the game world itself has been put together in such a way that it transcends the need to be a hardcore fan. I'll rip your guts right out your throat. It's just entertaining on a base level because of how well honed it is. And for that, Captain, I need your aid. And despite having a pretty well-told story, the game doesn't mess around or waste time before letting you kill shit. It's barely five minutes into the game and you're already getting swarmed by dozens of orcs and having a fight for your survival. Part of what I think makes Space Marines so much fun to play is this seamless flow between the melee combat and the shooting. Playing as Titus, you're kinda like Warhammer 40k's version of the Doom Slayer. This guy is death on two legs, hulking around in this 500 pound suit of futuristic battle armor. You're able to hold onto essentially five weapons at once. You've got a single firing weapon like a pistol, an automatic weapon like the bolter, a slow firing single shot weapon like the sniper rifle, and then a heavy weapon like the vengeance launcher. And these are broken up by number one, two, three, and four on the keyboard. 
Then the fifth weapon is a melee weapon. You start off with a knife, but you soon get a chainsaw, power axe, and then a goddamn thunder hammer, which functions true to its namesake. Firing weapons is bound to the left mouse button, and you can quickly zoom in for slightly better accuracy by pressing control, and also lob grenades by pressing Q. You start off with nothing but a bolt pistol, but then you'll get a bolter rifle, a stalker bolter, which is basically a sniper rifle, and then the vengeance launcher. But then these can be upgraded or replaced later in the game with weapons like the plasma pistol and the storm bolter. And these weapons all fall into pretty traditional archetypes, like the melter gun is basically your shotgun. Well, a shotgun that's on steroids and mixed with a flamethrower. You're only able to hold one of each type, so you'll be swapping your loadout around a fair bit throughout the campaign, which can make things easier or harder. A weapon like the Vengeance Launcher, for instance, fires out these little explosive balls that can be remotely detonated, and it is super powerful. But if you're only up against enemies from long range, well, it might not be all that useful. Then, if at any time you want to transition into melee combat and start chopping orcs to pieces, all you have to do is start wailing on that right mouse button, which is going to make Titus swing whatever melee weapon he has equipped. On top of that, you can press shift to sprint and you can do a handy dodge roll by pressing spacebar and the direction you want to roll. And the whole thing's just fast, fluid, but most importantly, it's fun. Being able to go from just firing on some guys in the distance to unleashing your power axe on a bunch of orcs that thought they'd try to take you on heads up is incredibly satisfying. And whether it be ranged or melee, you really just do become this one-man wrecking machine. You only need to play this game for five or so minutes before you notice how fucking awesome it is. Space Marine just gets how to make the combat feel good. It's a combination of the animations and the sound effects, with some really well-timed slow motion effects to highlight a gruesome kill, and these sort of hard-hitting, chunky sound effects that emphasize just how much damage you're doing to your opponents. A particular favorite of mine is the sound the chainsaw makes when you swing it, and when you use it to do some of the executions, and you can hear it cutting these poor orcs to pieces. The Melter Gun 2, which is like that flamethrower shotgun kind of thing, is so overpowered that it's glorious. It literally melts most enemies in a single hit, and it can just shred through bosses as well. It's awesome. Space Marine does appear to be a pretty simple hack and slash button masher, and it is to some extent, but that doesn't mean you should just go running into groups of enemies and mashing that melee button like a special needs student. You've got a few different varieties of enemies and this is really important to consider. The weakest of these are the Gretchens and these are these tiny little guys that usually come at you in flocks of half a dozen if not more. They go down pretty easily and a single melee attack's gonna end their existence pretty damn quickly. But it's with some of the other enemy types though where it starts to get a bit more complex. The sort of grunt enemy you'll encounter are the Slugger Boys. Now, while you might be able to take one of these guys on with ease, the thing is, these guys are never really encountered solo. So while you're going to be whacking on one of them, his three other buddies are probably going to be shwacking you from behind. This is where combos start to play a part in the combat, and you're going to want to use this basic knockback and stun combos to keep the stragglers at bay, while you deal with the rest of these guys systematically. See, whenever an enemy is stunned, you can perform an execution, which changes depending on the weapon you're using. And this is the only way to regain your health outside of using the Fury Mode. So utilizing these combos and stunning enemies strategically is important to do. Up from the Slugger Boys, you've got the Scar Boys, which are the same as the Sluggers, but heavily armored and take a bit more damage before being stunned. And you'll probably recognize these guys right away because of their armored appearance. Then up from that, you've got the Slugger Knobs, which are even bigger, tougher, and yet again more armored. Now these guys you need to actively avoid, doing damage in between dodging their brutal attacks before finishing them off with an execution. This isn't even covering the enemy types who hang back and shoot at you, or some of the later game enemies. Then we've got the Fury Mode, which pretty much just negates everything I said, and lets you go ham on the Orcs for the 10 or so seconds it lasts. In this mode, Titus can put down even the toughest of enemies in a matter of hits, and you pretty much become unstoppable. It's like the equivalent of a Berserk Mode, where your damage is increased and your health regenerates super quickly. You can still be killed in this mode, though, because even though you're able to pulverize most enemies from the front, you're still highly vulnerable from the side. So expect to get whacked in the ass a fair bit if you're not careful. 
Fury mode is charged up whenever you make kills, and it does get to that point where you're often just going in and out of it constantly because of the never-ending barrage of enemies the game throws at you. And if you go into it with a ranged weapon, you get the equivalent of a bullet time instead, which is pretty cool. And Space Marine uses all of these mechanics to the absolute fullest and is always just putting you into these sequences and little scenarios that make the best use of how fun the combat can be. Like those bits in the game where you get a jump pack and just can fly around pulverizing orcs by slamming into the ground. This happens a few times in the campaign. The first time you've only got a chainsword, but the second time it happens is when you've got the goddamn thunder hammer, which is the kind of thing that makes Mjolnir look like kitchen cutlery. Whenever you slam into the ground with this thing, if it doesn't outright vaporize enemies, it instantly stuns them, making it easy to finish them off with a single hit. The catch to the hammer is that whilst it does do a shitload of damage, it's so big that Titus has to hold it in his left hand the entire time, so it kinda limits what ranged weapons you can use. What I also really appreciate is that whilst you can generally go around making every orc wish they'd stayed in bed that day, you can still be killed really easily. Some of the enemy types can literally kill you in a couple of hits, especially if you're playing on hard. And I really appreciate the fact that on some level, the enemies still pose a threat. And we shall know no fear. The chaos demons you fight later in the game are really mobile and can even teleport short distances. So you realize you have to start using single shot weapons against them because their mobility allows them to avoid automatic weapons easily. And then the Chaos Marines have their own regenerating shield, similar to the one Titus has, so if you don't kill them quickly enough, this can even fully regenerate. It kind of reminds me again of playing Doom 2016, when you play it on Nightmare difficulty, no flex, how all it takes is a momentary lapse of concentration for you to kind of slip up, and the AI is then going to punish you. Makes the combat feel a lot more intense, knowing that you can still be put out of commission really quickly if you're not careful. There is some questionable stuff that's going on with the hitboxes, like sometimes you'll swear that you would have dodged an incoming attack, and yet you still take a hit. But I mean, this probably makes sense though, considering Titus is built like a goddamn brick shithouse. Space Marine also runs really well on modern hardware, which I think is part of why it still stands up so well. It definitely does look a bit rough around the edges, like some of the texture work is a little bit blurry, and you'll see the odd environment that lacks a bit of definition or detail but the overall presentation is still of a really high standard, and the feeling of the combat and the gameplay, I think, just still holds up. It's got good voice acting, it's got a good soundtrack, and it all runs at a smooth frame rate without any kind of stuttering or crashing. One of the biggest complaints you hear about the game, though, is that it's so short, and it's true that it doesn't really have the longest campaign. All up, there's 13 levels or chapters, and the whole thing can be finished in about four or five hours. But I'm not sure if that's really a worthy criticism, only because those four or five hours are packed full of good gameplay. There's never really any time in the game where you feel like they're just trying to pad out the game's length or use drawn out cinematics as filler. It's like complaining about eating pizza because pizza's only got eight slices. But it's like those eight slices are still really tasty and they're still gonna fill you up. What I'm trying to say is that the campaign feels like it goes on as long as it needs to go on for. It tells a succinct story and it tells it in a brisk fashion. You get in and you get out. It's like that old saying, brevity is the soul of wit. <laughs> and the game knows when to feed you new upgrades, new guns and new items to give you that feeling of being rewarded that makes you want to keep playing. You get upgrades that make your fury gauge feel quicker and last longer. There's better versions of old weapons that permanently replace them or just alternate weapons to use in your loadout. And the shift of the combat and the enemies you face always feels like it has some form of variety. Later in the game, once the forces of chaos have shown up, it becomes every man or orc for themselves. You've got the empire of man fighting for survival, along with the orcs and the chaos demons and marines. It's just this huge skirmish and you and your buddies are stuck in the middle. Kinda reminds me a lot of the surface tension chapter from Half-Life, where you're moving through these mini war zones, getting into gunfights as you're trying to complete your own goals. And these short sections are awesome. There's just never any kind of moment where you find yourself wanting to skip some sort of cutscene because it's boring you, or any gameplay sequence that feels like you're getting your teeth pulled. I mean, there is one bit in a later chapter where you're dodging these automatic gun turrets, which does kind of suck, but you just need to take things a bit more slowly. And it does offer up a welcome respite from taking on a dozen orcs at once. And again, I'll compare it all to Doom 2016, because they're both power fantasies that let you play as these epic death-dealing space marines. And they're both similar in how they have campaigns that feel full to the brim with content. 
Occasionally, you might backtrack a little bit after you've completed some kind of objective, but going off the beaten path isn't really an expedition, and it often only rewards you with something like spare ammo or some kind of collectible. Again, though, that's not really a bad thing. The game wasn't trying to be open world or anything like that. The other answer to this short campaign complaint was the multiplayer mode, which was really fun letting you play against other people online in modes like Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and Domination. There was even a super high level of customization for each player and a lot of stuff to unlock throughout the progression system. And I remember this being really popular on the consoles. Sadly though, now on PC, it's pretty much dead, which is a real shame. The 24 hour peak for it on Steam is around 200 players, which is just super low. About as low as my hydration levels after a night spent with your mum. Schwacked. There was also a co-op horde mode called Exterminatus that got released in the DLC pack later in 2011. But to play this effectively, you really want to have an entire group of four people. And coordinating that can be tricky. The biggest problem with the whole thing isn't even really the game's fault though, and that's the cliffhanger ending. And yeah, the ending to this thing's gonna leave you wanting a whole lot more. Wanting for something we'll probably never get. And that's because sadly the game didn't sell that well when it came out, which meant the sequel's just never gonna see the light of day. I think it was just more bad timing than anything else. Space Marine had some hard competition that year with games like Skyrim, Arkham City, The Witcher 2, Modern Warfare 3, Portal 2, and even Dark Souls. They all came out that year. And it's not that those games are objectively better than Space Marine, but if someone's got any of them sitting on the shelf next to a poor little third-person shooter in the 40k universe, I think it's obvious what choice most people would have made. Relic Entertainment, who developed the game, have a pretty good track record. They made the Company of Heroes series, a bunch of other 40k titles, and the Homeworld series too. But the poor sales along with the closure of their publisher, THQ, basically means any chance of a sequel is non-existent. And that sucks. It really sucks. This whole planet is mine! Whoa! Still, Space Marine lives on in our memories, and even now in 2019. And as far as games go that let you run around in powered up armor and turn enemies into red mist, well, it's still one of the better ones out there. So next time you see it on sale or you see it on Steam, go and buy it, alright? You won't regret it little bitch.